I'm Gail Simmons in for Sarah Gore and this is Open House. This week we're giving you a peek inside the homes of chefs and restaurateurs. We're with Antonia Lafasso in her Venice, California abode. Famed chef and restaurateur Eric Bromberg shows us where he prepares and hosts his family feasts. We're cooking with the Scotto family at their Hampton Bays hideaway. Plus, Chef Joey Campanero shows us around his Greenwich Village apartment. But first, we're heading out to Connecticut to check out Donatella Arpea's lakeside retreat. I wanted to create the ultimate outdoor kitchen. So let's go make some pizza. Come on. Welcome to Open House. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I'm dedicated to the celebration of good food. Whether in my own home or professionally, as a judge on Bravo's Top Chef, author, and with my work at Food & Wine Magazine. In fact, my newest book is called Bringing It Home, Favorite Recipes from a Life of Adventurous Eating, which fits the theme of today's show perfectly. This week, we're taking a look inside the kitchens and homes of a few renowned restaurateurs and chefs across the country. The kitchen has often been called the heart of the home, and for these masters of culinary arts, this adage is definitely truer than most. And speaking of kitchens, check out this fabulous kitchen here, just one part of a sophisticated Tribeca loft. From the entry gallery, you're delivered into this expansive main living space that's as chic as it is versatile. It's a perfect place to entertain, cook, converse, wine and dine. And at the end of the day, the master suite is an ideal refuge. At nearly 4,000 square feet, this five bedroom property is the epitome of modern downtown elegance. Now let's get started in Connecticut with the beautiful lakeside retreat of chef, restaurateur, and television personality, Donatella Arpea. When she isn't overseeing her busy restaurant, Prova Pizza Bar in Grand Central Station, she's relaxing with her family in the country. Let's hear why this is, and always will be, her favorite place both inside and out. Hey everyone, my name is Donatella Arpaia, celebrity chef, owner of Prova Pizza Bar. I'm so excited today to take you around my beautiful lakeside retreat on Candlewood Lake in New Fairfield, Connecticut. Let me show you around. So we bought this house about six years ago and immediately fell in love with the view. For me, it was really important to create an indoor and outdoor cooking scene where families can gather. I have a huge Italian family. We have huge Christmases with like 35 people every year. So I wanted a home that reflected that. So right now we're in the living room area. In order to take advantage of these amazing views, we decided to create an entire wall of glass. And that really became the artwork for this room. This fireplace appeared last Valentine's Day. My husband surprised me and said, I got you something that was stone and that you can enjoy and it will last forever and it's very romantic. I thought diamonds. Instead, he got me a fireplace, which I thought was brilliant. So here is where I spend most of my time in my kitchen. Everything is open and meant to communicate with all the other spaces in the room. And right behind me, I get to look out at a beautiful view of my waterfall. To me, it was really important for this kitchen to have the latest and best in terms of appliances, functionality, but still feel beautiful, a place where everyone can congregate under all these massive, beautiful, honed marble counters. It's my favorite place to be. Sometimes people say they grew up in the restaurant business. I literally grew up in the restaurant business because my father was a restaurateur and when I was born, my crib was right next to the dishwashing station. It's how he lulled me to sleep. Prova Pizza Bar is a labor of love. It goes back to my first bite of real Neapolitan pizza when I was a child in Italy. And I wanted to take artisanal techniques that I grew up with and that rich culture that I came from of pizza and bring it to people today. As important it is to have an amazing indoor kitchen, I do live on a lake and I wanted to create the ultimate outdoor kitchen. So let's go make some pizza. Come on. This is an amazing wood-burning pizza oven and today I'm gonna make some pizza for you. Do I have any helpers around here? You gonna help me make pizza? <laughs> All right, it's time to eat some pizza. How's yours? Good. You know, to me, 
home is all about food, family, and friends. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my lake house home. It really is my happy place. And if you want some pizza, come to Prova. Now that patio is definitely an ideal place to dine al fresco. Coming up next, we're in Greenwich Village for a peek inside the apartment of Chef Joey Campanaro. We'll be right back. Open House is sponsored in part by Coldwell Banker, the real estate company with real advantages. Find your home today at coldwellbanker.com. Welcome back. Joey Campanero, who I've known for years, is the chef owner of The Little Owl in Greenwich Village, which after 10 years has become a downtown fixture. Joey draws inspiration from the historic neighborhood and it comes out in both his dishes and his home decor. He invites us into his Greenwich Village apartment for a look at a few other everyday things that inspire him. Hey, I'm Joey Campanaro, the chef and the owner of the Little Owl Restaurant. And this is Bo, and we're hanging out in my Greenwich Village apartment. What I love about this block is how close it is to Washington Square Park and one of my favorite restaurants in the whole entire universe, Babo. Over a decade ago, I started out with one restaurant, the Little Owl. We ended up opening two more restaurants, Market Table and The Clam, our newest restaurant. All of my businesses are in Greenwich Village. So this neighborhood is the center of my universe. This home isn't the largest of spaces. It's a classic Greenwich Village walk-up, but it's filled with natural nooks and crannies. For instance, the two sides of the fireplace, which one side I filled with a custom piece of furniture to house my records and my turntable. And on the other side, a mirrored bar. Off the bedroom is a little terrace that's surrounded by our seasonal plants and flowers along with uh, an herb garden and some tomatoes and some peppers. It's a very romantic little garden for my girlfriend and I to have a cocktail before dinner. See you, babe. For the dish that I'm making for you today, it's a green bean dish. I'm gonna use peppermint and basil. What I love the most about this kitchen is all the stainless steel juxtaposed against this quarry brick and love this vintage red fridge. It was a big part of me making my decision to take this place. Today, I'm making sesame green beans. It's offered on the menu at the Little Owl restaurant. To make this dish, you wanna cook green beans during the summertime because that's the season. These green beans go right into a dry pan. Then I take a little bit of olive oil. Next, I'm gonna add some chopped garlic and sesame seeds. What makes a well-designed kitchen is to have storage next to your fire. It's very important to always leave one hand free. So most chefs will always have a hand free, always. Next, I'm gonna add some chili paste. And now, a little nubbin of butter. Next step, oyster sauce. And those beautiful herbs from my back garden. And now I'm ready to plate. Babe, will you taste my green beans? I would love to. I made them spicy for you. We love to eat with our hands. <laughs> Whether you're visiting us at our restaurants, the Little Owl Market Table, or the Clam, but especially at our home, we're always welcome. We're always going to be food on the table. I hope you enjoyed our Greenwich Village apartment. Here's a fun fact. Little Owl is located on the ground floor of the building from the classic sitcom Friends. Up next, Chef Antonia Lafaso shows us around her California home and why its design was a true family affair. I think I was probably 20 or 22, and I just came over and I took the tongs out of your hands and I was like, I got it from you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been like that since. Right.
Welcome back. Now we're meeting up with Antonia Lofaso at our Venice home. She's a partner and executive chef of three restaurants, a catering company, and has even created a line of active chefware. Her home was a real labor of love, a place that brought together all of her favorite things, including family, food, nature, and that California sunshine. What's up everyone? My name is Antonia Lafaso. I'm the executive chef and owner of Scopa Italian Roots. This is my home in Venice, California. This is a true passion project and a real labor of love. This has been an incredible journey. When Zaya's father passed six years ago, my father said, I'm gonna help you turn this house into a beautiful home for you and your daughter. And he's done just that. And every element to the house has purpose. On our travels, we come back and we bring different elements from where we've been, and they're just a sign of love. Come on inside so I can show you around. <laughs> I really wanted a living room, and really taking those words, a living room, into account. It's not supposed to be precious. I want to be able to have food on the floor. I want to be able to enjoy fight night with my dad. And I do a lot of recipe developing in the living room because it's kind of this comfortable, relaxing space. I have a beautiful candy dish that a friend gave me from Rome, Italy. I've got marbles that Zaya's dad gave me. We have paintings that Zaya painted when she was younger. And it's really an area for us to come together as a family, whether we're having dinner in, in a movie or uh, just some time to be by ourselves. So my kitchen, it's not the most glamour chef kitchen, but I love it because it has all the small little nuances of a restaurant chef. I've got my stainless steel walls. I've got my metro shelving so that I can see all my pots and pans because as chefs, we need to see everything. Um, and this is my favorite work table, needing just a regular prep work table in my kitchen, which ties this all to Scopa. My favorite part of the kitchen is the tile. It was the bathroom tile. I saw it, I fell in love with it, and I said, I want this in my kitchen. So my father put it down for me. Zaya and I don't always see eye to eye with my father. He has very sort of old school taste. So when I have like these outlandish ideas of doing a completely yellow wall or a chalkboard door or this, gray and white tile that came from the Scopa bathroom. Always at the end, I get a little pat on my back saying, you were right, which is pretty sweet to hear. Obviously, I like to cook inside, but I've got a great barbecue. I'd love to show you outside what I'm cooking up. What do you need, baby? You want me to help? So this is just a little surf and turf. Grilling, I think, has always been like a part of our family. It's great to be outdoors. I'm just like a little like sip of cheers. Now I'll say obviously bread goes great with cheese. You would say bread is what? The essence of life. Everyone breaks bread. <laughs> <laughs> Big in our family, we love it. So when I was a kid, um, my dad always manned the barbecue. I think I was probably 20 or 22, and I just came over and I took the tongs out of your hands and I was like, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been like that since. Right. So you know what the trick to getting cockles to open when they don't open? Say hello. 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 <laughs> See, everyone thinks you gotta like dump lobsters in water. Night-night. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Mr. Bean, come on, you wanna get on the barbecue? <laughs> we'll make a nice hot dog out of you. Check them. Yeah, sure. they're all open. They're all in there, yeah. they're all in there. All right, let's eat. All right. This is how we do family time in my house. To my friends, to my family, to my work family. Cheers, Daddy, thank you for everything. Um, I love you. You guys enjoy, salute. Stick around because up next is a carnivore's delight with Eric Bromberg. Welcome back. Now, we're catching up with famed restaurateur Eric Bromberg, who, along with his brother Bruce, turned Blue Ribbon into an internationally recognizable and respected restaurant empire. But at the end of the day, Eric trades in the hustle and bustle of restaurant life for his serene farmhouse-style home in Connecticut. Take a look.
Hi, I'm Eric Bromberg, chef and owner of Blue Ribbon Restaurants in New York City, and welcome to my house here in Newtown, Connecticut. After living in New York for 20 years, really something important to us was to have an outdoor space that felt like an extension of our home. We have this, this open pergola, we have the wisteria growing. We wanted really a big and dramatic table. And this table, it's almost five feet wide. So for feeding family style, we can put all the platters and the trays right down the middle of the table and everybody can reach it very comfortably. This is the kitchen. It's actually the exact same dimensions as the original Blue Ribbon Kitchen. We have marble countertops, white oak cabinets that have been stained to walnut, and a really significant marble island. And now let's get to the food. I wanted to make a meal that was perfect for eating with friends and family. All right, so I'll take the piece of meat and I'm gonna season it liberally with kosher salt and cracked pepper. Now, whether you're roasting in a rotisserie like I am here or in an oven, it's always great to put some vegetables underneath. As the fat drips down, it kind of cooks in that delicious drippings that come off. I'm gonna let the steak cook for a little while. It takes about an hour, and then we'll see you outside for lunch. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my house in Newtown, Connecticut. Right now, I got my eye focused on that end cut. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this. Thanks for coming. Up next, we see what's cooking at the Scotto family Hampton Bay's home. I wish I could catch my lunch every day like that. That's amazing. We love it. Ready to cook? I'm always ready to cook. Let's do it. See you after the break. Welcome back. Now we join Anthony and Teresa Scotto, owner of Manhattan's Fresco by Scotto, at their Hampton Bays home. This is where they escape when it's time to get some R&R. &R. Sarah joins them for a tour and of course, knowing the Scottos, a delicious meal. Hi! Hi! <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to Hampton Bays. This is my, this is my paradise. Come inside. I can't Come on, wait. we'll show you the house. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, I Welcome love to my home. a double height foyer because yeah. it's such a grand entrance. So who did most of the designing? I did, but I'm gonna let him tell you about everything that I did. Okay, I can't wait. Come on in, welcome to the living room. I mean, clearly it's all about the view. We made sure every wall had a window, you know? It's just, I wanted a picture from everywhere that you'd be in this living room, yeah. and it's all open. How about a glass of wine? I love a good glass of wine and a home tour. Now let me show you outside. Let's. I mean, talk about peaceful and Paradise. serene. Ah. Paradise. And no matter where you look, you're seeing water. I actually think this is the perfect size pool because you want to have more space for lawn. Let's go visit the dock area. Yes. So my son is Anthony's here. Hi, Anthony. What are you doing, Ant? Pulling up the crab trap. What? Oh, my goodness. Ah! I wish I could catch my lunch every day like that. That's amazing. We love it. Well, we're not gonna have crab for lunch, no. but what are we gonna have? Let's do a little pasta. Let's do a little pasta with some eggplant and some vegetables, and I have a great salad for you. I was gonna say, why do I, not, why do I think that there's a lot more than just pasta you in there? You gotta Italian, girl. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you ready to cook? I'm always ready to cook. Let's do it. Okay, so what are we making? So let's do a little peccary pasta. Peccary is a okay. large, extra large rigatoni. So we're gonna saute a little eggplant, mm. which I've sauteed with just a little olive oil. Okay, and I love this kitchen too. I love a huge island. So many people can congregate around right. this. And again, while you're cooking, what are you looking at? You're looking at the view. You're looking at the view. Okay, little olive oil. Mm-hmm. You right. ready for the garlic? Yep. A little red pepper flake. Yep, I'd like to thank you very much. You know, we're gonna work in the kitchen a little more often. Yes, I know, we should cook together more often. I'm gonna take a little salt, I like a little salt in there too. Already, this nice. kitchen has come alive. Okay, we're gonna add this to this. 
So this morning before you got here, yep. I wanted to do a little tomato sauce. So you did this this morning at yes. what time? Six o'clock this morning. <laughs> Who makes sauce at six in the morning? <laughs> so I think the pasta is ready. Okay. I wish that you could smell what I'm smelling right now because it's, it's pretty all good. amazing. Okay, well, I'm starving. This looks amazing. Thank you so much for having us. Should we dig in? Let's dig in. Chin done. Chin done. <laughs> That's all for now. It was such a pleasure filling in for Sarah Gore this week and taking a peek at how chefs live when they leave their restaurants. If you're hungry for more culinary inspiration, remember to pick up my book, Bringing It Home, Favorite Recipes from a Life of Adventurous Eating. And if you want to see any of the homes or chefs featured on today's show again, just visit openhousetv.com. You can also stay in touch on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Open House TV. And check out the new season of Top Chef on Bravo. Thanks so much for watching.